Hi, welcome back to Chops Garage. Here's a little update on what's going on and some important advice for all of those of you considering buying polos. Now, for those of you new to the channel, my name's James. I run a business called CG Car Sales and we have a YouTube channel, Chops Garage, which is all about the day-to-day -day running of a small car dealership, giving you uh, a little insight into how it works and, you know, hopefully every now and then some important advice. Quick little update on what's been happening. Still haven't got the RAV4 cleaned and up for sale yet. I've been driving my Disco around for another few days and that's running fantastic. The little Chevy Spark we got in with 14,000 miles, that's sold within 24 hours. That's about to be picked up and go down for its MOT. Nice local couple got that one to the little runabout and they'd seen the, 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 they'd seen the channel High Peak autos which also rave about chevy sparks being great little cars nearly didn't sell them on the, the car on the basis they said they watch high peak autos but don't watch my channel that was nearly a deal breaker for me <laughs> hopefully we're expecting this doesn't need too much but uh you can always be surprised when cars go in for mt every now and then they throw up unexpected issues so we'll get that off now there we go as if by magic it's gone we've listed the mini up for sale now so that is actually listed we've got someone coming to look very seem to be very keen to look at the red polo diesel uh, on Saturday. We have got someone that was said they were going to come today on the Mini. So we'll see how we get on with that. Warranty claims wise, we've had the Ford Fusion we sold. If you remember, we sold an automatic Ford Fusion on a 2008. There has been a claim on that one for the uh, door locks. So uh, for some reason on the offside, both door locks have decided to fail at the same time, which is strange. There was a warning that the door was open when the car was sold, but if you gave the door a slam, it, it, it went away. But it seems since then they've both failed, so I've had to order up door locks for the 2008 Ford Fusion Automatic, which are surprisingly expensive. Obviously, I've got them used, but even used, they're still expensive. I think I'm looking at about 150 quid for the, for the two um, central locking solid iron locks or whatever you want to call them and then plus fitting so we're eating into the profits a bit on that but as normal we don't really ever decline any claim even on an old vehicle like that so that's getting sorted so subject of today's video is polo now we've got the red one over there that's a 1.4 diesel and then we've got this which is the 1.2 petrol it's been here a little while but i haven't got around to prepping it yet and i went to move it today to prep it and uh that flagged something which is really important for any of you considering buying polos. It's important advice because in this price bracket, the sort of sub 5k market, a lot of people go for polos, for first time cars especially. And there seems to be this misunderstanding that polos equals bulletproof reliability. Now those of you in the trade will know where I'm about to go with this because it is very far from the truth. Polos, yes, the build quality in terms of the body shells, You've got a lot more metal around you. They're safe cars, they're solid cars, more so than things like Hyundai O10s or the little Chevy Spark we had here just a second ago. That element of it is true. In terms of reliability, no. In terms of the engines being more reliable than other makes, no. So we have, in the history of the channel, you've seen one of these 1.2 three-cylinder petrol polos, and this is specifically what I'm talking about today, the 1.2 petrol three-cylinders. We had one, it did, to be fair to it, it had a lot of miles, 150,000 miles on it, but it was burning oil very heavily. Now, I have had other makes, Hyundai's, Kia's, with similar mileages on, and they haven't burnt oil like that. And from doing the research, it's quite common. Now, one of the most important things to check on these 1.2 polos in both this and the older models, so this will apply to the earlier shape as well, is something that a lot of inexperienced people won't really know about. They won't be experienced enough to know and wouldn't necessarily notice it. But when I got to move this polo this morning from it being sitting here for probably a week or more, I noticed it straight away. So let's get the keys so I can show you. Now, first thing to point out on this polo is it's not a high mileage one. It's only done 58,000 miles. Now, a lot of you will be looking at ones nearer 100,000 miles on a 2011 like this, or obviously the older models could be even higher mileage. So this isn't a problem with this being a high mileage car or even a poorly maintained car. This has got a full service history. Right, now listen carefully to this. Now 
Now, did you hear that? Now, unfortunately, I can't start it for you again and get that noise if you didn't hear it. Let me show you. I'll start it again. See, you haven't got the noise there at all anymore. So, the first time, you should have heard that noise. We'll try and replay it again now. That's something that's very common with the Polos. It is a timing chain problem. So the Polo 1.2 engine runs off of a timing chain, not a timing belt. Now, I shouldn't assume that anybody knows what I'm talking about there either. So with your engines, you have your valves at the top, your camshaft running your valves at the top of the engine, and at the bottom of the engine, you have your pistons going up and down. But basically, you've got two parts of the engine both moving up and down. The thing that stops the two from hitting each other is the timing of the engine. And the timing of the engine is run either by a belt on the side of the engine, I'm sure you've heard of cam belts, or a lot of cars run with a chain instead of a belt. The idea being that the chain is the life of the engine, it should not need to be changed. Whereas a rubber belt needs to be changed every five years in general. The idea is a chain should be life of the engine. But the reality is they are not. Chains can stretch, but one of the most common things, and the noise you're hearing there, is there is a tensioner. I'll try and insert some pictures here. There is a tensioner that holds the chain tight, and that is oil-driven. Now, as they get older, the tensioners wear, and they start to fail, and they don't hold oil pressure, so they don't hold the chain tightly. So what you heard there is, as I turn the key, all the oil has drained out of the tensioner, and the chain is slack. So when I turn the key, the chain was slapping about because the tensioner was holding it tight, it was losing pressure. Now, what is the ramification of that? Well, with the chain loose like that, if you started and revved the engine up, the chain could jump or slip. I'm sure the mechanics there will probably give a better explanation down in the description. But that would allow the moving parts at the bottom of the engine and the moving parts at the top of the engine to potentially hit each other and cause serious damage that would need an engine replacement or a uh, engine repair that would be very expensive. If it slipped a little, you could start to get engine management lights and poor running of the engine because the timing was out and the combustion cycle wasn't correct. Now the biggest problem with this is you'll only really notice it when the car is cold. Obviously as they get more severe, they will start to slap when the engine is warm and they'll be noisy all the time. This car, if I start it again for the rest of the day, won't make that noise. It's only if it's been sitting for a good period of time. With this particular one, you could probably get away with driving this for a long while. We will be getting the timing chain done on this one because I know there's a danger that if someone turned the key and revved the engine from having it been sat for a few days, that's when that chain could slip and give a problem. So we will get the timing chain done on this. But if you're looking at a car that's been sold privately, or you know it could be a dealership as well i would hope most dealers would fix this problem because they most of them will know what this noise is but if the car for example has just been moved down the driveway to the front of the house for you to view and that's happened within the last few hours this noise won't appear it'll only appear till the following morning when the car has been sat on your driveway and i say this does apply to the earlier 1.2 chain driven polos as well the chains will go anywhere from i've seen them go as low as thirty thousand miles it could be up near 100,000 miles. So again, mileage isn't necessarily the thing. It's not like you can go and see a low mileage one and guarantee you won't have this problem. So it's absolutely essential when you go and see these 1.2 Polos that you go and see it when the engine is cold. You don't want the vehicle to be moved before you got there. Obviously, if you are have concerns, you want to really take a mechanic or someone to do an inspection for you. But again, it will be hard for them to spot it if the engine is warm. Now, like I say, this one's very early on stages, but if they are worse, you'll be able to rev the car up and potentially hear it as well. It'll be, again, a rattly sort of, literally a bicycle chain noise. Be cautious as well, because a full service history might mean you're less likely to have issues with the uh, burning of oil with the cylinder wear, but it won't necessarily mean that the timing chain's any more reliable on the car. Now, as with all of these things, the parts aren't massively expensive. I think if I recall correctly, I pay about £100 for the parts. But as always, it's the labour involved in fitting it because the side of the engine has to come off. 
So you're talking a good number of hours of labor to get it fitted. So if you are looking at a car and it's making that noise or it hasn't had a timing chain, they can't show you it's had a timing chain, I'd say from about 50,000 miles onwards, then you want to factor getting that done and have that negotiated within your price. I would say try and negotiate off at least 400 pounds, I'd say. So again, I think one of the most dangerous things with this problem is I will hear these, the sad thing is doing this job you do it, when I'm out and about and I see polos and I see pop hop people hop in them and turn them on, you'll hear people driving these polos with that noise and to the extent where they're actually, it's actually making a slapping noise all of the time when it's just running normally because people don't know any differently. They just think those engines might sound like that. But it is a ticking time bomb for the engine to get in damage. And unfortunately, I think that undeserved reputation for bulletproof reliability is one of the problems. I think people just think they'll carry on forever and they don't need to worry about them because they're a VW. But these are one of the worst ones for timing chain issues. The only one I'd put on a par with it would be the Vauxhall Corsa. I've seen those with 30,000 miles on bad timing chains as well. That's another car you really want to check if it's had a timing chain or budget having one fitted later on. So I'd like to start the car again and let you hear it, but the biggest problem with this is it won't, once it's got oil pressure in it, once you start it once and it has the oil pressure in it, it won't necessarily do it again for a while. I would say if it makes that noise after the car's been sitting for a, a number of weeks, that's one thing. But if every morning you start the car and it's making that noise, then you definitely need to look at getting your timing chain done. Now there'll be much more qualified individuals on YouTube that will go into more detail about this problem that will be VW specialists and be able to give you more detailed sort of information on how all of that system works. So if you want to go more in depth, I'd suggest you look it over. This is just a more of a quick overview, a more simplified version for those of you looking to get polos. But I thought it was important for me to cover that because like I say, there does seem to be this thing where people believe that VW stuff is absolutely bulletproof. The 1.4 diesel I have over here is a cam belt, so you won't get that problem. You just need to do the cam belts on the correct intervals, which again, I think it's five or six years on these polos. But these are really important things to check, especially when you're buying privately, because as we know with private purchases, you had zero comeback, unlike a dealer where you've got up to six months to come back to them. So I hope that's helped some of you that might be looking at polos or have got one. You might want to go and check whether you're getting that noise or not. Thanks ever so much for watching the video. We have got more stock incoming. There's a transporter turning up in a minute. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to hear about the car trade, then please do consider subscribing. It's free of charge. It costs you absolutely nothing to hit that subscribe button below. It just notifies you when new videos come out. About 65% of you who watch these videos aren't subscribed, so if more of you can hit that button, it'd be much appreciated. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up down below because that will suggest it to other people that might have a similar interest as yours. Thanks ever so much for watching. Catch you again soon.